นโมทัสสะบโกวะโตอรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตตะสะนโมทัสสะบโกวะโตอรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตตะสะนโมทัสสะบโกวะโตอรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุตตะสะธรรมะของพิษซีรีส์นัมเบอร์2 as they truly are ยัตถบุตรมมันตัลดับเบิลเมนบาวนา Is one of the three wholesome actions, kusala. There are two types of meditation under the umbrella of mental development. They are fixed or concentration meditation. Samatha and insight meditation, vipassana. Samatha purifies the mind while one is in a state of absorption. It produces calm. Tranquility and eventually psychical powers. As we are discussing about vipassana, we are not going to expand on it. Vipassana. Meditation purifies the mind permanently and eliminates suffering. However, one requires a strong and noble desire called chanda to eradicate suffering. Only with that strong desire, one will practice with sufficient effort to end all suffering. <coughs> Buddha taught us the eightfold noble paths to end all suffering. And one must practice the full foundation of mindfulness, s a t i p a t t h a n a to establish it. The full foundation. Practice the full foundation to establish the eightfold noble path. It is suitable. For beginners and advanced alike. In other words, you are a beginner. You practice the full foundation of mindfulness. You are an advanced yogi. In the practice, you still practice the same full foundation of mindfulness. So this sati p a t a n a Let's try to see a little bit. More. Sati means keeping watch or observing and remembering. You watch. You observe. 
and then you remember what you watch and observed. That sati. <coughs> Patana is attentive, precise, and penetrative of the full foundations or groups. There are many things or objects in the full foundation and you must be very attentive when you are observing these things. So, Satipatthana, a combined word, is precise and penetrative or watching attentively in the full groups of things. Satipatthana means watching attentively and precisely in the full groups of things. We keep talking about watching and observing and how do we do it correctly? Observing or watching is like a, watching over a two-year-old toddler, a child. Let's say you are a babysitter watching the two-year-old child. You can't afford to lose sight of the child. Otherwise, the child could be in danger. So, the purpose of constantly monitoring is to know or understand the situation, condition or object. Just like you are constantly watching the child to know his or her condition or situation or what's happening, the environment, everything. If one's mind wanders, one will not see the truth or nature of the object. You are observing the object and you must watch it as if you are watching a child, two-year-old child. And if you miss it, in this case, if you miss observing the object, you will not know what it is, what it truly is, what its natures are. The event or situation or object would be understood only when the attentive mind is steady and concentrated. That's how one's watch or observed. If you are practicing full foundation of mindfulness. A continuous, unbroken observation momentum will establish steady and firm concentration. So you have to have an unbroken observation of moment to moment, watching the object. Only then a firm and steady concentration will establish. And if your observation is broken or having gaps, or the mind wanders away, that concentration will not be established.
Suppose one observes the rising and falling of the abdomen. In that case, one will see a rising movement and a falling movement together with the shape and size let's call it form of the stomach you'll be aware of the shape and size of the stomach and you'll be aware of that stomach stomach rising and that stomach falling but you keep on observing gradually one will see multiple mini movements instead of a single movement but still you have a sense of the size and shape of the abdomen or stomach before you're observing there's a rising movement one swift movement from the beginning to the end and when your concentration established that one swift single movement is not one swift single movement they are multiple mini movements it consists it composed of multiple mini movements that's what one will come to experience or know or see <clears throat> and then you keep practicing eventually <clears throat> only mini movements those little movements or sometimes it's even vibrations without the sense of the abdomen will be in the field of awareness before you are aware of the form shape size as well as the movement now form shape size are totally gone you are not aware of it they are there but you are not aware of it all that you are aware is the mini movements simply movements not movement of this or that simply movement also just like the experience of this stomach or abdominal movement as we have just experienced uh, explained one can experience the lifting pushing and dropping movements of the foot stage by stage and eventually this lifting pushing dropping will simply be movements when one watches the abdomen or the stomach based on the intensity of concentration one will see various aspects of various stages as described above however awareness of many movements alone is called knowing things as they truly are you're observing the body rupa or materiality and eventually all that you are aware about this rupa is simply movements movement is the ultimate reality the rest of the things are pinyati concept or apparent reality so when you know the ultimate reality 
that is knowing things as they really are. Or you can call it correct knowing of materiality. That is how you understand. Oh, the body is simply movements. In Pali, that knowing things as they really are is called Yatta Bhutan. So, above, we are discussing correct knowing using movements, the wind element. We call it a wind element in writing, in scripture. It represents movement, motion, vibration. That's wind element. But we are observing the body. When one observes the body, or you can call it materiality, one can experience earth, wind, fire, and water elements. Full elements. Not just only the wind element, not only the movement. Also the earth, the fire, and water. Because all those full elements coexist. If there is one, you can be assured the other three are there. But we know the most prominent aspect out of the four in a moment when you observed at that moment fire might be most dominant or wind might be most dominant, earth. That's what you will be aware of it if you are firmly and steadily concentrated on the object. So, sometimes we know hardness and softness. Hardness and softness is the, what we call, earth element, tangible object something you can touch. We can, we know, understand the softness and hardness. The earth element, when the foot or the buttocks touch the floor, you can feel the hardness, softness, the floor is hard or the cushion is soft but without these material is simply a way hardness and softness occasionally we are sharply aware of the temperature That is fire elements. Okay, you are sitting meditation. Sometimes you are aware of the movement. Sometimes you are aware of the hardness. Sometimes suddenly there's some sort of a heat wave going on. But when you are aware of one, the prominent one, you are not aware of the others. But they are all there. Fire element temperature is like hot, warm, and cold. And we are aware of this when we are coming in contact with the other objects. Or sometime even inside your own body, there might be a heat wave or a chill. That's seeing, knowing, understanding, experiencing the fire element.
Other times, one might feel stickiness between your toes or your fingers or armpits, some sticky feeling. Sometimes you will feel sweats, sweating, because there's so much heat starting to sweat. When you're sweating, you are not aware of the heat, you are aware of the sweat. Sometimes running rows. And sometimes the buildup of the saliva in your mouth. And these are the manifestation of water element. You can see the manifestation. But you cannot touch or sense the true nature of water element, which is cohesion and dispersion. But the manifestation, yes, you can experience it. So, if you observed the body, whether it's abdomen, or whether it's lifting, pushing, dropping, or in the whole body in your daily activities, if you're observing constantly watching constantly without a break and with a strong concentration you'll be aware of all these things hot soft cold hot movements vibrations stickiness you feel stickies between your toes But people who have first time experience, they might go and touch it between the toes. Oh, what's that? It's sticky feeling. When you physically, accurately go and touch it and feel it, it is totally dry. There's nothing, there's no glue, there's no water. But the feeling of stickiness pops up in your wares awareness in your attention. That is the manifestation of water element. So this is how one's come to experience when one is observing the body or materiality or matter, rupa. So at those moments, one must observe, you observe, and know hard as hard, that's it, no more, no less, it is hard, soft as soft, hot as hot, cold as cold, sticky as sticky. You know it. And in other words, you note it. Hard as hard, soft as hot, hot as hot, cold as cold. At an earlier stage, one would be aware of the nature of the four outstanding elements, the four great elements, Adwin, fire and water, together with the physical base of the body. What it means is, oh, pain in my back, pain in my legs, sorry, it is uh, stiff in my back, pressure on the buttocks, heat on the shoulder, in other words, location of the body is coexisting with your awareness. But gradually, 
with persistent effort, one will know the characteristics or the nature of the physicality without the body base. Simply hard, soft, cold and warm. Not associating with the parts of the body. Such awareness is knowing as they truly are. As they genuinely are as they really are, as it is. This is body. We are observing the, talking about observation or watching the body. But we are not only watching materiality, the body, but also mentality, the mind. When the minds become prominent in your aware of awareness, you are observing the mind. Jita Nupasana. When they become prominent, you are not aware of the body or materiality anymore, but simply the aspects of mind. mental objects. One is Vedana, feeling, which is pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, and neutral feeling. So, when one is aware of pain, no pain as pain. It is not, I am in pain, or my knee is aching or my neck is really tense. Not that. Simply pain as pain. In other words, it is unpleasant. And at the same time, if the feeling of Vedana is pleasant, Sukha Vedana, simply no pleasant as pleasant, without identifying with the parts of the body. How do you identify? Let's forget about the parts. Let's go general. I am in pain. I feel great. I feel pleasant. And if you know that pain or pleasant or comfortable, without any identification with I. That is, one is knowing as they really are. One is knowing as it ought to be. One is knowing according to the truth. When one is aware of a thought, okay, a thought, cross your mind. And if you are aware of it, note it. Like that thought, thinking as thinking, thinking, thinking. One must not drift away with the contents of the thought. If one succeeds in documenting the thoughts as thought as soon as they occur, one is watching and understanding correctly. Yatha Bhutan. What it means is, oh, it's a thought process. It is not, I am thinking. Just purely 
the process as a process. One must watch and be aware of all physical and mental activities of the body and the mind as they truly are without identifying with I, me, mine, you. A person, an individual, a self or a soul That's how one watch correctly when practicing Satipatthana. May all of you be able to observe or watch the body and the mind and understood correctly in truth. Then one grabs the concept of non-self and attains path and fruition and nibbana. May you be able to achieve the goal as soon as possible. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much.